Hey guys, for those of you who don't, just look quickly. There we go. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark Jones. I uh, I have a vlog. I'm from Australia. Oh, originally from South Africa, and now I live in Australia. Our vlog's name is called That Jones Vlog. Go check it out. But this video is actually just a short little bit for the groups on Facebook that I'm in that constantly have questions about moving to South Australia from South Africa, etc. Often I read people asking questions about how much does it cost? How much is it like? How's what's living expenses like, etc. Most people can Google and figure out how much it'll cost to get here. But a lot of people I think struggle to have the actual sense of what things cost here while you while you're here. So um, this this video was completely unplanned. I literally like I literally sat here writing this down like 10 minutes ago. A little bit of history about me, just so you guys can kind of have an idea of, you know, who's talking to you. So, I am originally from Stellenbosch, um, Cape Town basically, but born in Stellenbosch, um, grew up there. I met my wife, who's an Aussie in Canada. Um, she then moved to South Africa. She lived there for three years. And then at the beginning of last year, we moved here. So I've been here for about a year and where we're now April, three, three months. So you're in three months, more or less. Before that, I had visited quite a lot. So it was kind of like home to me already almost, you know? I didn't come over on a working visa. I came over on a partner visa, um, which is not as simple as a lot of you think it is. It's not just marrying someone and then you get over it. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. Like you have to prove that you've been in a relationship. You have to get stat decks. You have to get, like they look at your Facebook photos to see if you've been together. You have to have investments, bank accounts. Like it's a, it's a long process. It's not just, oh, let's get married and get a visa. Like we had to have three years with the documentation. The visa cost around, all in all for everything together, cost almost a hundred, hundred grand. So it was quite expensive for me to come over here. Um, and by hundred grand, I mean hundred thousand rand. Sorry, I am going to get confused with a lot of stuff. We're working at about a 10 to one ratio at the moment. It's about 9.3, I think at the moment, but we're going to work on 10 to one, just makes it a bit easier. So 10 rand for one dollar, Aussie dollar. We live in Canberra. So Canberra is the capital. No, it's not Sydney for the 90% of South Africans that think it is. Actually 90% of the world, I think it is. Uh, Canberra is about three hour drive from Sydney. It's a man or well, not a man-made city every city is a man-made city but it's a planned city so it's it was like washington dc type thing so it's got um it's absolutely beautiful it was actually voted um the best place to live in the world the best city to live in the world for two years um i did do a vlog about it as well which is just kind of us messing around a bit and going up mount um ainsley um, but it shows you a beautiful view of what it kind of looks like. I will be doing a lot more vlogs in Australia. I haven't had time yet and we've been traveling so much and shooting stuff overseas in Africa and Japan, everywhere else. Um, okay, let's get to the point. Okay, so where do you, where do you, where do you guys want to live? So th this is a question that I get all the time from people like, oh, we didn't even know about Canberra. Um, we always just hear about Sydney and Perth and stuff, right? So this is really important because a lot of people um, make the decision based on, I think, where a lot of other South Africans go. Like, I think that's a big thing. I think Perth is like, people call it Perth Fontaine now because there's so many South Africans. A few things about Perth, just so you know, it's separate from everything else away from all the other cities, basically. So it's a really, really long travel time or flight time if you want to get there. It is closest to South Africa. The flights are only SAA. It's only SAA that fly um, to South Africa from Perth that I know of, direct flight, I'm pretty sure. Sydney, Sydney's the other one, obviously, a lot of people know. Um, Sydney is really expensive. It's actually voted one of the most expensive cities in the world to live in. Parking's expensive. Accommodation and housing is expensive, especially buying a house. That's really expensive. It is a cool city. It's really awesome. Like there's always a lot to do. There's amazing beaches. There's a lot of opportunity. It is, it is spectacular. Like I enjoy visiting Sydney. I don't would not enjoy living there. It is not my style. I don't like a compact, busy city. That's always got traffic and it's not my thing. Being from Stellenbosch is a small town, not used to traffic. Canberra for me is perfect. Okay. Canberra to Sydney. A nice thing about Canberra is that it's only three hours to get there. So you can go there for a weekend, you can go there for French, you can go there for the day if you want to. It's a 40 minute flight there. Um, and the flights leave like every hour. The airport's really small. You jump and fly to go over there. There's not that many South Africans in Canberra. It's absolutely beautiful. Like it's, there's no traffic. You can drive middle of the traffic peak time, like five o'clock and there's like four cars in the, at the robots or at the traffic lights. So it's, there's almost no traffic. I mean, you get a little bit, but almost nothing. Um, 
it's beautiful outdoors. Like there's lots of mountains that you can mountain bike and run and you can go running around the lake. And it's, there's so much to do here. Um, it also has the highest per capita restaurant rate um, per, for any city in Australia. Um, yeah, there's a lot to do. People, people diss it, but I think it, people diss it because it's not old and doesn't have the flavor and pizzazz, if you will, um, that Melbourne and Sydney, for instance, has. Um, but I love it. I love living here. I think it's spectacular. Um, clean, fresh air, no traffic. It's really safe. It's, I mean, most of Australia is really safe, but you do get less safe areas. Okay. Uh, Brisbane, I haven't been to. Melbourne, I have. Uh, Melbourne is very arty. It's really cool. Like there's like trans and it's, it's, it's a nice place. Also quite busy. It's very similar to Sydney for me in a lot of, in a lot of ways. If, if you look at it from a foreigner's perspective. Okay. So there's a few cities that just, just so you know, it's not just Perth that exists in Sydney. Um, shop around, look where you want to stay. Uh, I've noticed a lot of people tend to just kind of book and go and live in the city and they've never even visited. I would say save a bit of money if you can. Travel over here, go and see a few of the cities, talk to the people, you know, stay there for a few days and experience it. Come see the places first before you just decide to move here because you might decide to go to Brisbane just because the housing market's cheaper and whatever and then you hate it there or Sydney or Canberra or whatever it might be. So come and visit first. Okay, so those are the things about the cities. One thing that I've noticed um, a lot of people say and talk about on the forums is jobs in Australia and jobs in South Africa. The main difference is like in Australia, you don't have to hang on to a job like you do in South Africa. Like I feel like a lot of people in South Africa, they get a job and then just stick with it for like 30 years and then retire like, because they're so scared to try and look for something else or try and start a new opportunity. It doesn't quite work that way. Like, yeah, if you don't really like your job, Find something else. There's a lot of opportunities out there. If you work, if you're good at your job, or if you, you know, if you work hard and you do your job well, there are a lot of opportunities here. You can chomp and change. So don't be scared to come over. I'm not sure how all the visas works with your working regulations and all that stuff, but if you come over, you don't have to stick with one job. You can find a different job. And the other thing is, like, if you've got a partner who's coming over with you and they don't have a job yet, it's really easy to find a non-skilled or less like an easier job like, there's a lot of that type of fairly odd ish jobs that you can easily get and the pay is good remember australia's minimum pay is like 25 bucks an hour or something i'm not sure what it is now but the other thing is also um if you get offered a job don't just take it like there's a fair whack of negotiation you can usually do for salaries like if you're good at it, if you've got a good resume, you can bargain with them and say, okay, I want a bit more, I want these perks. Don't just go, oh yes, I'll take the job, thank you very much. Like, it's a thing, you know. Okay, next, housing. Housing is really important. Let's do with renting a house. So rent's really expensive. For these prices, go on a, a website called um, allhomes.com.au. Um, you can look at rent, you can look at housing, you can look at what different areas, etc. buying, all that stuff. Rent is fairly expensive. I never like renting because you just pay someone else's mortgage so buying is always a better option here the interest rates are also a lot lower here but houses are very expensive a house in canberra or somewhere in like sydney region new south wales a nice ish not house in a nice ish neighborhood being from cape town like i'm talking about say a middle house in belleville somewhere in a nicer part of belleville like that type of thing um say three bedrooms or so it's gonna if you're gonna look at something that's a little bit newer you're gonna look at a million dollars like that's that's more or less what they go for now um the all the other states perth brisbane or cities um i'm not sure about i'm not going to talk about them but canberra new south wales it is a bit more expensive i think if you're looking at buying a house and you're a little bit handy it's always a good idea to maybe buy something older and then renovate it on that point though Labor is really expensive in, in Australia, sorry. Labor is really expensive in Australia. So like renovations, landscaping, um, that type of stuff, it is expensive. If you can't do it yourself, it'll be expensive to get it done. We got a plumber the other day to unblock a drain. He was here for about 15 minutes. It cost $250, right? So if you do it yourself, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, same with landscaping. I do our landscaping um, myself. Um, and renovations like if you need painting done or stuff like that if you're willing to do stuff like that then you'll be fine like we got a quote to get um, a few rooms in our house painted so I think it was like two bedrooms hallway bathroom kitchen um, living room you know just a, a, a section of it um, and the guy and the quote is like four thousand dollars so it is expensive uh, where you can go and buy the paint for basically the same cost as it in South Africa and do it yourself. Okay, next, the cars. 
So when you gonna when you come to Australia and you're not bringing a car over, which by the way is stupid unless there's like an immense amount of sentimental value, and then you probably don't care about this video because you have too much money anyway. So second hand versus new. Um, you're probably gonna buy second hand if you're coming over and you're watching this video. Second hand cars here are, I would say, a little bit cheaper. Dep it also depends on where you live, how the market is. Second hand market, for instance, around here is not very good, so you don't get much for your car second hand. Um, a lot of people buy new as well because the interest rate on cars are about four, anything from four to five percent ish. So you, you do get good deals for second hand cars if you shop around and you're willing to bargain a bit and stuff. So if you own a Fortune or a Hilux in South Africa, you sell it there, you should be able to buy the same one here, more or less. However, a few things you've got to get, um, remember when you buy cars here, yeah, and this is something that really got me in the beginning. It was just like, it still drives me mental. There's a little thing called stamp duty in Australia, right? You get it when you buy a house and you get, you get it when you buy a car and I think that's it. But anyway, stamp duty is a pain in the butt. It's I'm not sure about the percentage that you have to pay, but like on a $40,000 car, your stamp duty is going to be I think $1,200. Um, then you also have your rego and putting it through road weather if you have to and all that stuff. So if you're gonna buy a, say a 30,000, anything from 30 to $40,000 car, so there's always an extra $2,500 that's gonna come out of that for rego and stamp duty. Another thing you have to think about um, in Australia is parking. South Africa parking costs nothing. It costs like $2, two rand or whatever, it's like 20 cents. Parking here is expensive. Like if you want to drive, if you park in Sydney, it'll cost you 40 bucks a day, $40, not rand, dollars, 400 rand. So parking is expensive. That's what a lot of people do use public transport, which is amazing around here. That's another thing. You don't even have to own a car, especially if you work in the, and live in the big cities, you don't have to. A lot of people don't because parking is awful. They stamp you, rego, all that type of stuff. Fuel, fuel is about the same price here. It's like, 13 around like a dollar 30 for diesel or whatever so it's it's about the same services medical aid medical aid is free when you come to um, australia or not medical aid but like emergency like you can go to a hospital for free and get proper care it's it's not like you don't have to have a private plan so that saves you a lot of money uh what's the next thing internet tv that type of stuff foxtel is basically like dstv back home we don't have it i think it's a waste of money because we have netflix and stan um and then i just stream my sports i hardly ever watch sports anymore um you know there's certain things that just <laughs> Internet. Internet will cost you about a hundred dollars a month for a nice line and then you can stream if you've got a smart TV you can stream Netflix which is about ten fifteen dollars a month stands about ten dollars a month there's more than enough movies and stuff on there. Uh, daycare. Daycare is really important it's really expensive in Australia like I know people um, good friends of ours the woman and the husband work um, they earn both in good salaries her salary basically goes to daycare straight like it basically just goes there every month you get obviously you get cheaper places and you get better places um, but it is really really expensive here for expensive here for daycare so have a think about that as well if you've got small kids um, and you're both deciding that you are going to work do some research on daycare it is expensive it might not even be worth it for you to work because your salary will go straight there but also no maids here by the way you can get cleaning services they're terrible and they charge you a mozza Whew, sorry this is a long video guys i'm trying to run through this quickly okay next thing is goods um like user products the stuff that you're gonna use every day so if you're moving here permanently, you might be bringing a container. That is a good idea. You can get shared containers as well, so you don't have to pack a container completely full. You can easily do research on that. We used, um, I can't remember the company we used, but anyway, we got half a container. We brought a few things over. Now, suggestions on what to bring over. Don't bring a dishwasher and a washing machine. Our calculations got us to about 3,000 Rand per cube. That's more or less what you're gonna pay. Obviously cheaper and more expensive. Like it's, it's gonna vary. Um, if you look at a dishwasher or a washing machine, that's about the size of a cube. Please don't bite my head off if I'm doing this in rough sizes. Like not everyone is going to go sit and me measure everything. So that's about the size of the cubes. Now, if you do the math, if you've got a, say, a new dishwasher, you paid, I don't know, 5,000 Rand for it. Now you've got to pay 3,000 Rand to get it over here. But you can probably sell it in South Africa where there's a good second-hand market for three and a half, four thousand 4,000 Rand, which means you've only lost 1,000 rand but you're not paying the three thousand rand to get it over yet you can rather buy a new one here um, instead of bringing it over and we'll get to the cost of things here in a second so dishwasher fridge that type of stuff it's it's not worth this it's not worth it sell it there buy a new one here 
TVs as well, probably not worth bringing that giant box over and it's probably going to get damaged and things that are worth bringing over. A bed. Beds are insanely expensive in Australia. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of the labor that goes into them that makes them so expensive. But our bed back home, I think our bed back home costs about 8,000 Rand. It was a nice king size box top bed. It's, an, it's a nice huge bed. You know, it's not the most expensive, but it's also not the cheapest. That same bed here is about 40,000 Rand. It's about $4,000 for that same bed. So we brought our bed over. So that's something I would definitely and if you can bring extras bring extras as well tables chairs don't bother they're cheap here they take up way too much space um just remember every electricity every electrical thing that you bring over it's going to have a different plug so if you want to bring it over either bring adapters put one plug on or you have to change all the plugs um and if you don't know how to do them you have to get them done it's expensive because you have to pay an electrician to get them on done so just think about it that as well clothes clothes are really easy to pack they compact they compact really well and they're expensive to rebuy so bring your clothes kitchenware all the small stuff like kitchen drawer in your kitchen drawers you'll be surprised how expensive it gets when you have to go buy utensils around you and glasses and plates and cups and those things are all really heavy and they can easily be compacted and packed nicely another thing allied pick fizz that's what we used another thing um when you get a container ship over do the packing yourself the companies are going to tell you it's better if they pack it because they have to then they can sign it saying packed by company instead of packed by owner and then the customs doesn't look at it that's all rubbish customs looks at everything they'll look at the sheet that you filled in and they'll look at everything the reason i say this is because we had a few of our boxes packed by people and we packed some of it ourselves my tools, my garage stuff, I brought all that over and I could, I chucked away the boxes and I really, I packed it in there. I mean, those boxes were jam packed. Um, same with the kitchen stuff, jam packed. Then because we weren't done, they came in, they did some of the packing. They packed up Tupperware in a box, right? They wrapped every single Tupperware. So they put, the, they used the bowl, they put the lid on, then they wrap it in plastic, or in newspaper or bubble wrap or whatever. So they've got this giant one cube box, got six Tupperwares in it. What's the point? You know, they, they were, so I actually made them unpack everything and I rewrapped it and packed it myself. Like you don't have to wrap a plastic piece of Tupperware. It's ridiculous. They will try and get as much um, space as possible. Another thing is when you get a quote, you're gonna to have to give an estimate of the size or the cubage that you will have. Um, they will measure it once it gets there and on the side as well. Always underestimate that quote, don't overestimate it. So if you think you're gonna have 10 cubes, tell them you're gonna have eight cubes, pay less and then rather pay up. Because what happened with us, we thought we were gonna have 10 cubes, we paid for 10. We only had about six cubes, I think. Yeah, we packed really well. We only had about six cubes, six, six cubes, whoa. Then we, um, we had to wait quite a while and not fight, but it was a few annoying emails to get the money back. So rather add a bit than have to sit without money. Okay, goods, how much do these things cost you? TVs, fridges, washing machine, dishwasher, electronics devices here are either cheaper or the same price, but I've generally found cheaper. In Australia, um, you can really also wait for specials. That's a massive thing here. They have middle of the year, which is end of financial year and end of the year Christmas special. Fridges the same, like there's massive deals that come on with fridges, washing machines, dishwashers, that type of thing. So you can wait for them. Um, the smaller things, we do a lot of shopping online as well. We hardly ever go to the stores. So especially for electronics, that type of stuff. Online, really, really good. You also get price matching by a lot of stores. So if you find it cheap at one store, you can go to another store and go, hey guys, look, these guys are selling for this much, really price match it. And they will actually do that. Um, to give you a quick example, I'm a videographer, so I shoot weddings, commercials, that type of stuff. Give you a quick example. My camera was $4,500, so 45,000 Rand in one of the bigger stores. Yeah, I bought it online for $3,200, I believe. Um, so I saved a lot of money there because I just used discounts and that type of stuff. So you can you can shop around, you can be around, you can get some good deals. Uh, where was I? Yeah, so buy those things here yeah, if you can. Um, don't bring them over. But the smaller stuff, things that are small that pack easily are generally easier to get really compact to bring over. Bigger things, usually not worth it. Do the maths yourself. Think about selling them secondhand there and then just buying new stuff here. It's also really nice to have a fresh start when you come over. Okay, next, uh, pets. We have a cat. Cats are awesome, by the way. If you want to bring your pet over or pets over, it is expensive. I think when we brought our cat over, it was 40,000 Rand-ish, I think. 
because it's got to go through a bunch of vet checks, quarantine, flights, all that type of stuff. It is expensive to bring them over. So just keep that in mind as well. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Sorry, I, like I said, I'm falling around with this a bit, but cell phone contracts. There's a company called Kogan, K-O-G-A-N. Look them up. If you bring your own phone, which will work here, you can get a SIM card package for, I believe it's $200, I think, $220 per year. Uh, it's unlimited calls, unlimited texts and you get i think five or six gigs worth of data per month so next and lastly we have the things that are really expensive that you don't need but you want like restaurants movies going on holidays flights all that type of stuff let's start with flights depending on where you live if you live in perth the flight's a lot shorter to get back to south africa especially if you just fly to Joburg, that's much quicker brisbane i don't know if they fly to i think you have to fly to sydney or to perth and then fly over Canberra flies to sydney sydney to Joburg, so keep that in mind as well how your flight schedules if you're going to go visit or if people want to come visit you um, a cool little tip if you do go back for a holiday or to visit i visit all the time i travel there quite a bit you get gst back on things that you take over so i often take camera equipment laptops that type of thing that i need to that people ask me for i've got a mate who wants a new camera like okay it's cheaper here i'll buy it here for you i get the gst he's like he's happy because he's saving whatever a thousand dollars on it i take it over i get gst back so if you if you work all that out you get quite a bit back you can almost i have actually flown and gotten my entire ticket back just on gst for stuff that i've took over taken over for people next we have restaurants restaurants in australia like going out is a lot more expensive you want to go to the nicest restaurant excluding drinks so just your food's going to cost you about 80 dollars per person drinks obviously really expensive you can pay 10 12 dollars for a beer in the restaurant so you're going to look at about a hundred dollars per person if you have a beer or two plus your food so it's expensive to go out here so just keep that in mind that's something we did a lot in south africa we don't do it as much in australia uh, next we have uh, beer and wine so beer a case of beer will cost you about 60 dollars here so it's about 600 rand the last two things i want to say the thing that still gets me in australia is the ratio between things i've just spoken about the restaurants and how expensive it is what i mean by that i'm just looking at my playstation so a playstation 4 on on sale here will cost you three hundred dollars you can go out to a restaurant for three people for that same amount so you can either go out to a restaurant mom dad one kid or buy a playstation 4. did i go over food i don't know if i went over food food will cost you basically the same if you look for specials and you really shop around you what i mean by that is three liters of milk here will cost you three dollars so it's 10 rand a liter so it's probably cheaper by now tuna is cheaper meat will cost you if you buy lamb at a butcher if you buy like le leg chops at a butcher it'll cost you ten dollars a kilo steak chicken that type of stuff slightly more expensive but once again if you look for the specials you'll get away with it the last point i want to just say and i should have said this right in the beginning as well if i had to compare the salary you need here to live the lifestyle that you do in south africa i would say eighty thousand dollar salary a year before taxes will make you live about the same life as a three hundred and say 300 to 400,000 rand salary in South Africa. That's what I, my guess would be. Once again, things like daycare, where you live, what you eat, and how often you like to do the luxuries, those are the things that are gonna really eat into your money, especially daycare. Honestly, look at daycare costs before you make the decision. Okay, I'm exhausted, I'm gonna go have lunch, and I'm going to Talk to you guys again soon. Like I said, for those of you who haven't just subscribed to the channel, subscribe, there's a lot of more stuff coming about cities in Australia, about traveling Australia. And there's a few cool stuff on there where we travel back to Africa. We travel all the time. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope it helps. Give it a like. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps us out. This awesome you saw. The advantage of living here is massively outweighs the advantages in South Africa. I would rather struggle here then have a great life there. Just can't put a figure on safety of your kids, future of your children. Anyway, guys, I've spoken way too much. I hope this helped. See you next time. Ciao.